This is the very first video I've ever uploaded to YouTube in 8K. Can you spot it? Probably not. Depends what screen you're viewing it on. Have I future-proofed it? Don't think so. I'm only doing it in 8K because I can. About two years ago, I made a YouTube video about Video Enhance AI from Topaz. And I think it was the first version that you could use on a Mac. And there were adverts for it all over Facebook. Now, at this point, I should come clean and explain that I only bought that version so that I could make a video, have some fun and take the mickey out of something that couldn't possibly do much. Luckily, they ran a deal at the time, so I got it for only $99. And the big surprise was that I actually found Video Enhance was really quite good. It had a few problems for me. Um, it couldn't cope with interlace footage. You couldn't choose the output quality. And it was really slow. I mean, really slow on my old Mac. That YouTube video proved quite popular. It's coming up to 100,000 views, but people keep telling me I should look at the latest version from Topaz because apparently it's changed quite a lot. The other thing that's changed a lot in the last two years is Max. This one is a fully maxed out M1 Max. I was going to do a review of it, but there's so many around already, there's very little point. Suffice to say, if you're editing video, it's fast. I mean, really fast. The latest Video Enhance AI is now above version 2.6, and apparently it's been tweaked to play nicely with Apple Silicon. So maybe now is the perfect time to take another look. Because I bought the original two years ago now, this upgrade has cost me another $99. But you do get another full year's worth of upgrades for that. And I suppose I do prefer this way of charging to the subscription model that many companies are using because if you don't choose to upgrade, it doesn't have to cost you any more. As soon as you fire it up, you can see that the interface looks a lot more polished. It looks like a more professional product. First thing, let's go into the preferences and tell it I've got an M1 Mac. And while I'm there, I'm going to max out the processor memory. It's not like I'm doing anything else at the moment. Let's start by using exactly the same piece of low quality footage I used the last time, just to compare. And straight away you can see there's clearly a lot more AI models and options to choose from. Luckily, although there's a bewildering array of choices here, we've also got a light bulb so that Enhance will suggest ideal settings depending on how we describe our input video quality. Let's try that. So I'm going to choose low quality, progressive, and I suppose the main problem, the video artifact, is that it's over compressed. Let's up res it to HD like last time, and I'll ignore the grain for now. And the big thing for me, Enhance now supports ProRes 422HQ as an output codec, and that's huge, exactly what I wanted. The other thing you can do now is compare AI models before committing to the render. You can even preview a few seconds of moving image. You can magnify it and move around the frame. This gives you a chance to check for artifacts on all your footage before you've wasted time rendering it out with the wrong settings. And that's really useful. So let's start this processing with all the recommended settings. On the previous video, this took over five seconds per frame which meant well over half an hour to render the 22 second promo in HD. Wow! We're now talking 0.1 seconds per frame and it's going to be finished in less than one minute. That's incredible! I've now got the whole promo scaled to HD, looking clean and sharp, and in less than 60 seconds. Okay, that is impressive. And now I'm itching to try that 10 second 4K drone clip that took me 10 and a half hours to up res to 8K in the previous video. And I've still got that exact clip. So let's call this original footage high quality, up res to 8K, and let's go. What a difference. 1.79 seconds a frame, or less than 8 minutes for the whole thing. 10 and a half hours? down to eight minutes. 
what a time to be alive. But seriously, that now addresses the biggest issue I had with the previous version. I mean, obviously, some of that improvement comes from also having the latest Mac. But this combination is now completely usable. The other issue I had was with interlaced footage. It just couldn't cope. Now it looks like we've got suggested settings for sorting that out too. Again, I've still got the problem footage I had before, and it needs upscaling to HD. We'll call this medium quality interlaced and use the suggested settings again. Output to ProRes and get it going. Already, as it's working, I can see that this is sorting out all of the interlaced frames into progressive. If you look at anything that moves too fast, like these pigeons, you can see that Enhance is cleaning it up as it scales to HD, and all at 0.13 seconds per frame. So all of the previous moans I had about Video Enhance AI appear to have been sorted in this version, and it's now quick enough for me to incorporate it in my normal editing workflow. Let me explain. Here's a 4K drone shot that I needed for an ITV program. Now don't panic, no need to report me. I had all the permissions I needed to fly at the airport. But as you can see, I wasn't allowed to get too close for obvious reasons. To make the shot more effective, I could always crop into the 4K and reframe it a little as well. For this example, by 300%. But things start to fall apart pretty quickly. The compression on the drone codex is just too much. And obviously, it's not 4K footage anymore. So I could just video enhance the shot back up to 4K, and yeah, it does improve. We're now pixel peeping by 200% on a shot that was cropped by 300%. And you can see the difference. But wait a minute. What if I upscale the picture to 8K before I crop in by 300% to get the frame I want. Let's try that. So now let's crop in. Still looks good. And when we pixel peep at 200% again, comparing our previous 4K improved version with this 8K, it's obvious that this is even better. I suppose it makes perfect sense. If you crop your frame before upscaling, you're effectively throwing away data that Video Enhance would probably find useful. But if you upscale before you do your cropping, then it looks visibly better. And it shouldn't have taken me that long to work it out. Looking at all the available options we've now got on the menu, it looks like there's a few more tricks that we can now do with Video Enhance, like noise reduction. But now you've got control over the level of noise reduction. You can even add a little grain, which helps overly clean footage from looking a little plastic. So now you have enough control to change the resolution without adding too much noise reduction. Or you could clean your footage up without changing the resolution. I went back through my ancient footage to find the noisiest clip I could. And I'm not proud of this. It's from when I was learning to fly a drone with something like a GoPro Hero 1 at night with a lot of gain. And I put that footage through Video Enhance AI and I was amazed. Not just at the quality of what came out, but the speed. It's much faster to get something close to being usable than using, say, neat video, which I was before. I also tried it on actual night footage where I'd push the gain up too high. And I found there's a limit to how much noise reduction you can use. But using the compare function, it's easy to see when you've overdone it. On the whole, I found Enhance is really good at reducing noise and de-blocking overly compressed videos, even if you don't need to upscale. The other new trick that I found myself using quite a lot is that Enhance is really good at adding frames increasing the frame rate so that you can slow stuff down. It does this a lot better than the optical flow or blending methods you see in Final Cut Pro. I don't know if there's any AI involved, but the slow-mo modes are great. Here's a slow shot taken with the Panasonic S5 camera, and we can now use Enhance to slow it down by, say, another 400%. 
And to my eyes, it looks perfect. No weird artifacts, nothing jumping. But this shot is high contrast with nice, sharp, moving edges. So obviously I thought, let's see how far we can push it and maybe upscale at the same time. I set up some water dripping into a peli box and shot it with my A7S III in HD at 200 frames per second. I'm pleased with the result, but let's see how much slower we can get in 8K. I like that. It's as if I'd shot it at the equivalent of 300 frames per second at 8K. And water is probably one of the hardest things to slow-mo well. So I'm getting a bit gushing about this Video Enhance AI from Topaz. But an awful lot has happened in two years. I've gone from buying it just to make a silly Mickey taking video to actually using it as a normal part of my 4K editing workflow. And in two years, Macs have got a lot faster. We've had a pandemic. There was an attempted coup by a US president. Prince Harry left the royal family. Elon Musk has become the richest man on the planet. The US admitted to having a UFO task force and Beirut blew up. Thanks for watching.